Have you ever scrolled through Instagram, TikTok for what feels like hours just to end up feeling drained and uninspired? Well, I sure have. The spark to this thought actually comes from watching one of uh, Michael Bliss videos here on YouTube where he was talking to many of these aspects and for example one of them being how much of the content consuming that we do that are actually 100% mindless you know just aimlessly mindlessly scrolling through different social media feeds really it's like we're some kind of social media zombies just scrolling through and leaving comments with really no depth or substance behind it like just heart emoji so cute uh, looking good cool and so on usually it's not something that we i don't think that we do it consciously even we just leave comments here and there and get sucked in by these platforms and after all i mean all of the platforms they are designed to to keep our attention and to keep us scrolling and i mean this video is not going to be about like all, all social media platforms are everything that's wrong with the world that's not at all what i'm saying i mean i am here on youtube i'm also on instagram i do have a tiktok account i mean that's not the point the point i want to make which i'm going to go come to later is you know, cr for creators and for us as as people, as humans, how we can interact with these platforms and with content in a more intentional way. And of course, there are, I know there are thriving communities on pla other platforms like Instagram and TikTok as well that are very much engaged and they have very meaningful conversations. I mean, I have, for example, I have good conversations with my audience on uh, Instagram. And that's, I mean, I love that. That's just great. But most of the time, and I don't think I'm alone with this, it just feels like a mindless fire hose of content just blasting at your face. That's also, I feel like, something that is different with YouTube. Because over here on YouTube, I feel like you, I mean, even a seven minute video Watching that is like an ocean of time and an ocean of attention spent on one single creator or one single content piece. Comparing that to, you know, the fast paced, the trendy, uh, really, I feel like the other, other content on other social platforms are really like pick me content. Really, it's so, it's so loud. It's loud visually. It's loud. Uh, like audibly, like the, the voices are loud and music is loud and visually with the text and cuts and it's also fast and it's loud. I guess that's, <laughs> I guess that's the best way to describe it. And for me, I feel like I've seen, I hope it's a trend, but here over here on YouTube that it's more slower a slower pace of content, a slower pace of videos that are on the rise. I'm not sure that is a trend, but I hope so. <laughs> I really much, very much enjoy those kinds of videos myself. And you know, it's not like YouTube is our attention span content savior by any means. I mean, they are sure are downsides with YouTube as well, but I still can't help but feel like there is difference though the vibe is different and another thing when you go on youtube you usually go there with some kind of purpose you go there to do some research about something to learn something or you go there to watch a video that one of your favorite creators have uploaded or i don't know you go there with some kind of intentions and of course Yes, well, again, one of the things with YouTube, there are, of course, the YouTube rabbit hole as well that you can just fall down very deep into. And there sure are strategies out there to get you binge watching videos as well. But, <laughs> but still, 
most of the time it's me actively choosing and actively clicking on videos that I want to watch, which makes me more of an active audience. And I think that's better for like for me as when I'm the audience in the role of an audience, it's better for me to be an active viewer than the zombie-like state that kicks in on Instagram and, and TikTok. Really, you know, the endless aim for likes and comments and, you know, having that focus, I feel like really can stifle your artistic voice and really hinder you from sharing your perspective and talking in your own personal voice. Just because it's so hard to look away from these vanity metrics that, that they really are. And because they are right there, they are thrown in your face and it gives you like the dopamine rush and you get like instant gratification and everything like that. And it's just, you know, we start creating for the algorithm, really. And if you have any, like, I mean, if you are a creator yourself, you don't want to create content for the algorithm, do you? And uh, any kind of artistic aspires, aspirations, I guess. You, I don't feel like you don't, you want to, you know, get in the claws of the algorithm. You know, we start creating for the algorithm and not for the love of the craft or the desire to share our life our perspective and we lose the interconnection between humans when we only bow down to please the platforms and I mean the community and actually connecting with with you guys that's why one uploads videos at least that's why I upload videos otherwise I could just leave them on my computer what if all these platforms disappeared tomorrow like they're just gone we're back to like 19 I don't know, 96. <laughs> what would you have to show for? I mean, all the time you spent on the platforms, what would you have to show for it? In best case scenario is like, hopefully maybe you actually got some friends that you can contact otherwise out of some of the platforms, but otherwise it's just random weird videos on your phone. Probably with not even with sound because you <laughs> you can't download them with the sound because of the copyright and stuff. So, yeah. If you do have creative ambitions, I believe that you're better off creating from a place of creative integrity instead of just trying to churn out this loud, fast-paced content. As when I think about that. I feel like it's way easier to ground myself and think about the next step for me. What what's going to be the next type what's going to be the next piece of content that I create? What what do I what do I want to make? What do I want to say? What's on my mind that I want to share with you? Because you know I do really like to create content and for myself and, but it has to like originate from a larger vision and have my creative, like my body of work <laughs> in the mind, in the, at the center. Like what is this all contributing to? Instead of having, you know, what video can I make to please the algorithm? Because that's not, that's not what I, why I do videos or paintings or take pictures or you know share my thoughts because that's yeah that, that I mean having the platform saying that you did a good job that's not really I don't know that's not what what that's not what I want basically I want to have this I want to know what you think I want to share my thoughts and I want to hear what you think that's what's fun about this and also when you're creating from a place of integrity, it allows you to build a body of work that actually reflects your values and you can look at it and it will show your artistic growth. 
when you evolve. And also when you do that, I think you are on a way better path to actually nurture your creative spirit, so to speak, and grow both creatively and as a person instead of just chasing these fleeting trends and I mean that I mean I can feel my own frustration with this and it's because I do these things myself I fall into the trap of doing them myself even though I don't want to I mean I just said I don't want to do it and it's not really uncommon that I get frustrated but with myself or get frustrated in general because I can see that I am doing something or behaving in a way that I don't really enjoy and that I don't want to. Anyway, when we create from a place of authenticity, I do think that we actually will attract other people, other humans that are interested in hearing what you have to say, that want to be like a part of your life journey or creative journey, if you choose to share it publicly on the platforms like, like I do. And I believe that we find, we will find others that appreciate our thoughts and our views and our perspective, want to be a part of our community and this having this foundation it allows me to connect with you on a much deeper level and actually support one another in our in our quest to develop as individuals as creatives and just generally through life mm. wow I just dipped my whole face in this. <laughs> I would love to hear your thoughts about this on this topic in the comments. Do you ever feel like you're scrolling and scrolling and just feel, you know, drained and maybe even sad after a doom scrolling session? Do you feel the pressure to conform, to change who you are? Which is also, I mean, that's maybe a whole other video, but if you have any artistic or creative you know aspirations to be an artist if you fall into the trap of conforming then i mean aren't you going to lose your artistic edge i mean being you being you being yourself how cliche that my sound is your edge still so cold outside, there's just no way to drink coffee without the thermos mug. I'm also a slow coffee drinker, so I usually drink coffee in that, even though I'm inside. Life hack! I'm gonna be all dizzy from all the sun I get today.